everyone and welcome to this video. So anyways, today's book shock is United as One. Also, you will realize that background has changed. I do not have a light in my room where I would normally do these book talks. I got it taken away because apparently the electricity bills went way up. And so I'm the one that gets punished. Prologue, which this book had me in the fetal position and crying a lot. I'm going to say that now because what happened was <laughs> um, just prologue right here. Beginning. Three pages and I start crying because we see eight, which is really Citrakis Ra, but oh well, uh, eight, uh, and it's like, and I'm like, no, no, I was crying because it was eight and it looked like eight for a bit. I'm, it's, I'm sorry. And then we get to five. I'm like, oh, five, you done good because he tried to kill Citrakis Ra, even though it was a dream. He tried. At least he tried. He is being redeemable, and I still have mixed feelings on him. I'll get to that later. Um, and then the boy walks across the football field. I was not paying much attention, because I was already crying from the eight debacle. Um, so, I did not pay much attention to this, and how, um, and how it says running across the field. I did not pay much attention to this. I actually thought it was John until I'm like, oh shit, it's Mark. So I thought it was John and I was like, uh, and then I was getting confused as the story went on. But yeah, it was Mark. <laughs> yeah, Mark dies. And really I felt like I didn't feel much for him. I maybe shed a single tear, but that's it. And then we are with John. Now, John? Oh my god. Mm. John really is, is, was like staring me in this book because I'm like, he's just like, oh, that's left is killing. That is actually a line at the end of one of the chapters. And I am, I was like, John, you okay there, buddy? I, I know you're upset about Sarah and all, but can you stop being so murderous? I don't think Sarah would, would want you to be like this. I know she would want you to keep fighting, but not in the suicidal way. Uh, uh, please, John, stop. John, stop. But of course, John doesn't stop. Sadly. And he's forever alone, as Marina is forever alone. And I'm kind of shipping them. <laughs> there is a specific page in here. I just want to read out. Because I thought it was particularly funny. So, after John takes up an entire warship, uh, we, f we find this guy, Rex, uh, whose full name is um, Rexicus. Rexicus Saturnus. Why do Mogadorians have such weird names? Anyways, so on page 251, the second line to the bottom, says, yeah, but I always thought that was because he banged number one or something and that's from nine and he's just like yeah well adam's an exception because i thought he banged number one and i'm like dude no adam was young you know how young adam was because adam's like your age and he was basically as young as you just no just stop stop and one was already dead I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But it's, I like that line. It's it's funny and it's it fits nine so perfectly. 
And Lawson's reaction to John taking over the warship is great because he's like, What the fuck did you do? I said, get a cloaking device, it's not take, and take up an entire warship. Though good job, and you should do more. I'm like, don't encourage him. Do not encourage him, please. Just don't. This is not okay. He can't, can't, can't encourage John to do this shit because he's gonna do it, and then he's gonna be freaking mad. Well, no, he's he's probably gonna die. He probably would have died in that second warship thing because he's been expending his legacies, and it it really can put put a toll on a person. John's dream sequence is to track his raw. Okay, I, I had some images and some images I could have lived without, which was the possible naked Satrakis bra, except from waist below he's covered in ooze. At least, at least we didn't get that image, though we did get an image of five naked. I could have also lived without that. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I could have lived without that image, please. Just no. We find out in this in this dream sequence that Satrakis Ra can take a Lorik's powers and transfer it to a Mogadorian. And it's very creepy. And then we get the extra things from that. And it's just so disturbing. And John's like losing John can feel blues, losing his legacies, and I'm like, John, stop. Wake up, wake up, wake up. But he wakes up. Everything is fine, except... But he's woken up by Adam, so... Everything is fine, yeah? Sure. Five. <sighs> okay. So... Literally five. Okay, when John decides that he needs to learn to how to fly, he's just like, "Okay, John, imagine you are a puppet, and imagine the strings pulling you up and off the ground." And so John does that, and yeah. But anyways, then he's like, then literally, what fucking happens is. John and and five well five basically John's like I need to learn faster and five's like oh really and then he freaking freaking flies at John and they are they are battling it out John ends up singeing the straight coat that five was in and then five is basically naked. And a mental image I could have lived without. Um, <laughs> and they're flying all over the place, and then John learns how to fly. But five, five helps him, so he's he's not that bad. And and he was lying, and and but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, five I. I think I'm liking five more, um, but yeah, he's just five. Five is like I'm liking him more, but he he still killed eight. It, it it's it's some you cannot kill one of the better best characters and stuff. Like I wouldn't even be fine if he killed nine. I would not be fine. I just can't kill anyone. Five, just stop. I don't like betrayal. Now, the military meeting. We're jumping way back into the beginning, but, um, the military meeting, um, I like how John calmly just stands up, walks over to Adam because Adam's in chains because he's a Mogadorian, breaks the chains. 
And then just, but he also takes out all of the ammunition on the soldiers' guns out and, uh, and just instant disarming them and it's like, bitch, what you gonna do? I am a, I am a genius. I am a lord. I can fight you all on my own, which he can fight thousands of Magadorians apparently on his own, so, yeah. Speaking of the warship, uh, and how John took it over, um, fucking, he, while Adam and Six are just getting all the cloaking devices like Lawson wanted, John is literally there like, he's like, See you guys, I'm gonna go take over this warship. I'm gonna go fight off a couple thousand mogs. And he goes and he fights off a couple thousand mogs. And I'm like, holy shit. Shit buckets. I'm like, oh god. But yeah, he literally takes over this warship on his own. He fights a couple thousand mugs on his own. And it's, it's great, but it's dangerous. Now we have stupid kids one, two, three, and four I want to talk about. They are just idiots. Never post something online. Please don't, just don't. Don't post something like that online when you're being hunted. Just no, this is the number one rule. Even I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be that stupid. If I just wouldn't. But they do anyways, and they're at Niagara Falls. Two of those stupid kids die, but they don't die because of their video incident. They die because Mark... Ugh. And, yeah, so the stupid kids, one through four, I'm not calling them by their actual names, but stupid kids one through four just needed to, like, calm themselves. Really needed to calm themselves. So, Marina's like not in this book for a while, um, but that's fine. Um, but when she does wake up and she talks to John, and I'm just like, oh my god, it's like feels central right there. I'm like, oh my god. Mm. And John start grieving, and he's, and then he's like, "No, must not grieve." And I'm like, "John, grieve with me, grieve with Marina, please. Just grieve with someone so I can grieve with you, so I can get this over with." But he doesn't grieve. Yeah. But anyways, after the warship incident and Lawson and encouraging John to go take over another warship, John goes to the base. To basically just get another cloaking device because he's got burned. But anyways, um, John gets a noose around his neck because Mark led the Mogadorians all to there, all to the base, and then uh, he got the noose uh, around his neck. And then also, <laughs> Fury Dunra, remember her? Yeah, uh, she sticks her appendages in John's basically back. Uh, it's his spine area thing, and he's rendered powerless, and she has all his powers. He's like, it's like, one of the worst things when you have the one who has the Zymic, Zymic legacy to friggin' to get their legacy stolen and transferred to a mug. It's like the worst thing because of all the copied legacies. You can get like every single legacy then. It's horrible. But anyways, so while they're there, Sam's just like, I'm going to rescue you, John. And I'm like, Sam, go away. No. No, Sam, you're you're no match. But Fury doesn't know how to use the legacies properly, so yeah. But anyways, Sam leads the Mogs to Five's cell. He, if Sam has a new legacy. He can, he controls electricity basically. So he turns off all the lights, and then he navigates towards Five's cell, and 
basically what happens is a freaking leads the mouse to five seven five just like hello in a rope no less like hello and then all hell breaks loose and I'm like Sam you are a genius so we're gonna talk about the ending sending had me bawling my eyes out now I'm gonna state the reasons why I was bawling my eyes out about six might have died but I was like nah six is too tough nah she's gonna live the author's not gonna kill off six and then Adam I thought he was dead I was crying and it was horrible and I'm sorry if my voice goes super high like right now. God damn it. Okay, so Adam, I thought he was dead. Dust, I thought he was dead, but does does die saving Adam. Um, John, I thought he was dead. Nine loses an arm. That was kind of depressing, but I didn't cry much. Um and <sighs> five yeah, I cried with five being basically killed, dropped in news, but but he's he's living, he's living, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I think the ooze healed him, and he he it's possible he might be immortal now. Um but we'll step away from that for now. <sighs> but there was so many things happening and I was like are you kidding me this is what it all comes to everyone dies except for a select few that was literally my response before John finally wakes up after six finishes off the drag is wrong that was basically the book but then we go into the one year later. But yeah, Strikers Raw is killed and stuff, but yeah, I was I was really upset and, and yeah. But we don't even find out that Adam is alive until the one year later part and it's and then that's when I'm also crying more and I'm like, Okay, okay, breathe, breathe, breathe. I need to breathe. <sighs> But yes, it was great. I love this book. Anyways, let's continue. Um, Nine is apparently, uh, Nine is working for the government now, uh, training people with legacies at the academy. Good. Also, this is one year later because John spent one year cleaning the cave of AIDS. AIDS prophecy death. <sighs> so many feels. He made a table, a really big table in that cave as well, and it made me happy. But anyways, he's been doing that, and he's been cleaning it, and yeah. But anyways, back to the fact that Nine is a professor, and so is Lexa. Lexa is also a professor. Um, he, John gives each of them a lorik stone. John gives everyone he goes to a Loric Stone. So, Nine is working for the government. Adam is in the Mogadorian camp. Even though he could leave at any time, uh, he doesn't. Because he feels that uh, the other Mogadorians need him. Uh, yeah, uh, they need his guidance. <laughs> um, he also... He also finds Six and Sam gives each of them a uh, Loric Stone, but the thing about them is it's freaking he finds them in freaking uh their clothes are off on um, their that is island and <laughs> they're in the ocean naked. Yeah, that 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 was great. <laughs> That was great imagery right there. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, at least Six and Sam are fine. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um, then he goes to see Marina, who 
Oh, also, Ella tracked down uh, John, so she was, she was totally fine with that. Uh, but Ella's been spending her time with John, so... Yeah, John hasn't been totally alone. Just know that. Anyways, uh, then he sees Marina, and Marina is always going to this island where Five is. And it's like... And he's super thin now, so it's like, oh god, and he looks like he's trying to starve himself. I think, I personally think, he is trying to kill himself, slowly, excruciatingly, so much. But they leave five out of it, and John gives Marina a stone, and they... And then they'll all use it to travel to the cave, and, but Marina's, Marina's use, but Marina comes with John to the cave, and she's like, thank you. But the table, the table's like the one on Lorien, and it's like, oh my god, why? <sighs> the table's like the one on Lorien, except it doesn't have numbers, and the last line in this book is literally, I am done with numbers. Also, Marina and John, like, kiss. It's great. It's lovely. Um, but there's going to be a new series coming out, and I am so glad. Um, I, I, I love, I like this author, but I'm scared of his writing now, because, I'm scared of his books now, because he likes to just kill off characters and make you think that some characters dead when they're really not. But anyways, this was a great book. I would rate this book, honestly, a 4.5 out of 5. There were some issues with things that are freaking, yeah. Uh, it might just be because John was a bit too crazy in this and I didn't like that. But yeah, that's, that's, it. that's it for this book talk. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope my, I hope I did not go, my voice did not go too high, um, or that I didn't sound hysterical, um, but just, I'm sorry if I did. Anyways, I, that's it for this book talk. I will see you all in the next one. Bye!